Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Dr. Punder, where we talk about music, not medicine. And on this edition of the show, we're going to be debuting another series, this one called Charted, C-H-A-R-T-E-D. And all Charted is, is a reflection of my interest in a particular week in music history, music chart history. This is where my interest, um, okay, I'll just say it, downright obsession for a week in music history, albeit an unhealthy one, is an interesting one. And that's where I relay it to you. And on the first inaugural episode of Charted within Dr. Pundit, I'm gonna be talking about the week of January 5th, 1980, the week ending Saturday the 5th of 1980. And this is where I'll be talking about not only the listing the top 10 hits of that week, but also talking about the top half of the chart, numbers five through number one. This particular week in music history has always been somewhat special to me for a couple of reasons. I'd been listening to the radio for a couple of years. I had invested in buying music, though I still wasn't making enough money from allowances and things like that to really invest in starting buying albums or things like that, mostly, 45s, that's right, those things that look like little plastic frisbees with a big hole in the middle of it that we used to play on a, forget about it, 45s, vinyl records, vinyl singles with an A side and a B side. And that's when my interest in music really took off. And back around that time, I was in the sixth grade, a lot of people were making hay over, we're going into the 80s, the transition from the 70s to the 80s. And so what better way to herald that decade change than with the state of the top 10 songs in America for that first week of January, 1980. So what were the top 10 songs of the week? All right, well, let's get it started. As ranked by Billboard magazine for the week ending January 5th, 1980, were as followed. At number 10, moving up and eventually would be peaking at number 7, is We Don't Talk Anymore by Cliff Richard. At number 9, Cool and the Gang with their number one R&B hit, Ladies Night. That song stayed at number 9 on its way down the chart. At number 8 of 14 notches was a song that would never go on to hit number 1 but would peak at number 3. The late Kenny Rogers who died of complications of dementia a few years back with Coward of the County, a great storytelling song at number 8. At number 7 down two notches was the Commodores, fronted by Lionel Richie, who in a couple of years would embark on his solo career with Still. At number six, down three notches, was the number one hit by Styx called Babe. At number five, up a notch from number six, was Captain and Tennille with Do That To Me One More Time. At number four was Stevie Wonder with Send One Your Love. That song would eventually peak at that position. It was spending its second week at that position. At number three was the other big mover within the top 25 of that week, Michael Jackson's Rock With You. It would go on to hit number one. It would move up eight notches from number 11 to number three this week. It would become his third number one hit behind Don't Stop Till You Get Enough from 1979. And of course, his first number one hit from the early 70s, Ben, a song about a rat, go figure. At number two, down a notch, after peaking at number one the very last week of 1979, was Escape, the Pina Colada song by Rupert Holmes. And number one, moving into that spot from the preceding week, was the final number one song by KC and the Sunshine Band. It was their final top 40, their final top 10, their final number one hit with Please Don't Go a departure from their early disco days and R&B funk days with a ballad. So there you have it, the top 10 songs of the week, a week I find extremely fascinating, the first full week of 1980, top 10 songs as ranked by Billboard magazine. So let's talk about the top half of the chart. This was a chart in which 70% of the songs would go on to peak within the decade of the 1980s. So they were mostly popular after the turn of the decade as it is. The song at number five, 
moving up to number five, it eventually would go to number one and be one of the top 10 singles of the year of 1980, was Do That To Me One More Time by Captain and Tennille. Of course, Captain Daryl Dragon, he's the guy that wore the captain's hat. You may have thought of that as being kind of gimmicky, he's sitting at the the piano and that kind of thing. Who is this crazy guy? But you know, it was all part of the shtick. And of course, Tony Tennille, the kind of leggy looking female, they were married and they remained married until 2014 when some hardships caused their breakup and divorce, but they remained very good friends. The song Do That To Me One More Time was a nice plaintive ballad for that time, part of the yacht rock kind of era that made it so special. It's a song that pretty much was their swan song. It was their last big hit. And of course, they would continue to ride the fortunes of that song many years into the future, being a staple on adult contemporary radio. Just a great song. The song at number five, Do That To Me One More Time by Captain and Tennille. And of course, Daryl Dragon died five years ago in 2019 at the beginning of the year with kidney failure. And I'm not sure what the cause of that was. There can be a lot of causes. But again, we're not here to talk about medicine. We're talking about music. So let's keep the focus. All right, at number four, Stevie Wonder with Send One Your Love. It not only was one of the first big hits of the 1980s for him, it was a song that remains popular and is as much an emblem of his music delivery, especially with a ballad, uh, back then as it is today. And it was the only release from the 1979 album, Journey Through the Secret Life of Plants, which is, to be quite charitable, kind of a weirdly hypnotic, album, very experimental. This was, I believe, one of two or three vocal songs on the album. It was mostly instrumental, and he wanted to get across was how plants interacted with humans or something like that. If you are brave enough to listen to what I think is a disaster of an album, go for it. The only bright spot was Send One Your Love from that album, which would peak at number four this week on the Billboard Hot 100. Send One Your Love. At number three, of course, Michael Jackson, his first big hit of the 1980s was his first number one of the 1980s, his third number one overall, Rock With You. A kind of mid-tempo ballad produced by, who else? Quincy Jones from the LP, Off The Wall. And it's an LP that purists and completists who follow Michael Jackson and the Jacksons would say is his best album. Better than, of course, the mega opus thriller that remains the best-selling album to this day. I don't know, I think they're both very good, but Off The Wall does have a special sound, and this was just one of the tracks on that album that made it so memorable. It ended up spending four weeks at number one, and of course, this week, the first week of January 1980, moved up eight notches to number three. The song at number two, Rupert Holmes escaped the Pina Colada song. Now, originally, this song was called Escape, written by Rupert Holmes, a guy who pretty much wrote all of his songs, because if you listen to his, his body of work, the vast majority of his songs do tell a story. I mean, very adept songwriting. This song caught fire in the late summer, early fall of 1979, and had a steady rise to the top most people, including DJs, were calling this song the Pina Colada song because it's what the song is centered around, even though he does say and does talk about making our escape. But if you like Pina Coladas, that basically got etched into American sensibility. So his record company had to parenthetically rename the song Escape the Pina Colada song and the rest, as they say, is history. That song actually not only peaked in two different years, 1979 and 1980, so the previous week, the last week of 79, it was number one, fell to number two this week in 1980, but would regain the number one spot on the 12th of January, 1980, thereby hitting number one in two different decades as well as two different years. So quite the chart feat. I don't think he was planning that when he released it, but it's a great record to have anyway. I still play the Partners in Crime album, the album from which it came every now and then and it sounds you know very yacht rocky and of course the song escape the pina colada song is the centerpiece finally the number one song of the week these don't go by casey and the sunshine band it was their last top 40 top 10 and number one hit spending a week at the top the first week of 1980 the first number one of the 1980s 
a nice ballad, but not particularly the most memorable song. But when you do hear it, it takes me right back to that week, which is another reason why I find the week of January 5th, 1980 to be just so memorable. Should I get a life? I don't know. Again, I was a sixth grader, just really getting into listening to my hometown radio station and Top 40 music. And this week in charted music history, that's all you need to know. Just a fantastic week. And there you have it. The top 10 of that week, my love for the top 10, especially the top five of that week, an explanation of those tracks. I hope you found it entertaining. And if you like what you see here, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Dr. Pundit. It gets me up in the algorithm and you get great shows like this one. As the late, great Barry White used to say, let the music play and I'll see you on the next video.